So the purpose of the 20 million is really just a pre-qualification number. It's not really to zero in on. So we'd be throwing darts if we tried to pay what would be the high. But the thing is, they don't get to keep that. They're going to get through a guaranteed information on it. They're going to get interested. Why else would they do it? What if they're viewed as $20 million? No. What if that was their response was predicated on a $20 million bill for 50 years? And some people have increased $5 every four years. Of a, a clear understanding with the bidder like that $20 million take dollars represents one like number, or whether it's 30 or yeah. 50 they, years, this, and something else represents the other. These people are not doing this. In, in no fairness, the bidders will, um, when they get this, the they'll run some numbers on their own. And despite what it says here, they'll get an idea as to what this concession is worth for them. And what we put in there is not going to really guide that. We just want to have a minimum number, but you're, you're, you know. So I think they won't be, they won't say, oh, geez, I've got twenty million dollars just for fifty years. What they'll do is they'll run the numbers and they'll figure out what it's worth. And if it's not worth twenty, they won't respond. But worth for what? I mean, worth for it. They'll determine the worth. Right. <coughs> is the worth, are they going to determine the worth based on thirty years or fifty? Thirty years or fifty years. And how would we know that? Right. We won't know that. Till so we won't know it from the response to the call. Right. We'll know. Here's what we'll know. We're at least getting $20 million. That's what we'll know. These are people who'd be at least willing to pay $20 million for a consent. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've been involved in a lot of these Thank private you. partnerships. And if I, I would suggest that you, for the request of qualifications, you say either 30 or the time frame has to be the time frame, or else it'll you'll spend another five months going through one year, two years, and the numbers will be all over the board. At the end, it'll be you'll never get through them at all. So many financial models. If you don't have a set time, you'll never be able to weed them out. That's right. And they're they're already here. The bidders are are already. People already in the city and looking, and they're figuring it out. And you won't be able to concentrate if you don't have a set number of years that you want, because the years will then determine the, if it's uh, the taxes, if it's uh, a purchase like a mortgage. You understand? So there's going to transfer tax. They're going to try to figure out every way to woo you, and you'll you'll be stuck on that. Oh, someone's been in 37 million, and you'll look at it at the end, but it's for 67 years, and it's going to be hard to turn them away. That's just my suggestion. Yeah, we agree. That's what we did. That's exactly what we did. Oh, I thought no, it said 30. No, it says 30 or 50. That's cool. yeah, I think you got to have the Oh, no. We, 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 yeah. Oh, no. We, we, yeah. And, he, he, what we thought is that. We want to have, at least this was the thought that, that you know, we had heard from Desmond, which is we, want, we don't want 31, we don't want 32, we want 30 or 50. And then those are the two, and we'll get two bids on that, and then we can make a judgment. That we ask for two decision. different proposals? One for 30 and one for That's 30. kind of what we're doing. But it's not what we're doing. But it's a Well, this is at the RFQ process. The RFP process, what we're going to do is there will be a confidential information memorandum which will contain, you know, as we go forward, uh, uh, a lot of the information we're starting to pull together actually with Sam's help, the concession agreements uh, which are being worked on, and so that the way it'll work is they'll be able to come back to us with 30 years a number and 50 years a number. And what we're trying I think to do. What this board is trying to do, Alan, is yeah. not getting the end of the next stage if, in fact, the bids are too low. So if you know the 30 year bid is. If, you know, if a 50-year bid is $20 million, I, I can't imagine anybody wants to go along with that. So by saying 30 or 50, you'll get two separate numbers. And yeah, you'll, be able you'll to, get two separate numbers. You'll be able to sit down and discuss those numbers. And if neither one of them are sufficient, we don't go to phase two and spend any more money. I think that's what the consensus has been. Yeah. Yes, um, we definitely have set things up so that, that way. That particular paragraph should be revised to say 30 uh, revenue Price the concession here for 30 years at one number and 50 years at another number. Mm -hmm. yeah, 20 million should be fluid if it's 
30 years. If 20 million is the minimum, it's going to yeah. be 50 years. It should be a minimum before the 50. Yes. Yeah. Okay, well, that's what Murray suggested. And uh, Desmond suggested not. But we can, we, you know, given the authority suggestion, we can, we'll put in uh, uh, a number for that and comparing them with Desmond so that we have something specific that one change we want to make in this. Up with new numbers from 2012 annualized from like 21,547,000. Um, How did that come about? Yeah, the, the annualized numbers are basically we had in here, we basically wow. the first two months, now we based on the first three months since so we just got the, the, the um, And that just based on how much was the thing? Only well, no, it's, it's two months times six or three months times four. I did some uh, pro forma statements. I sent it out to certain people. If you look at 2009, 10, and 11, my pro forma statement came out losing about 36,000 a year. And it's completely confirmed right here. 110 minus 182, 21. So there's a net loss between 2009 and 2011. And you expect somebody to pay 2 million for this? 20 million. 20 million. It's 20 million, I'm sorry. This, is, this isn't worth anything. I mean, well, it would be if Article 1031 of the IRS code applied here to this 30-year lease, where at the end of 30 years, the leasehold estate would transfer to the prospective leasee, and the parking authority would wind up with nothing. Are you sure? Would, were there other comments? Uh, we wanted to go through the, the RFQ if we could. Um, what other is it? Um, well, saying we're not going asking that Desmond keeps asking up. Now I'm wondering, who is this organization? They will come here, since I keep hearing their names mentioning, everyone says, who are they? But they will come here and 
and answer for themselves instead of having another party answer for them. They seem to be the major player into this. As a, as a community person, I'm completely lost who this entity is. And I know you probably know it, but people in the community are going to ask, who is this person you keep referring to? Sure. And even the gentleman at the end just said, why don't we just hire Desmond? So, I mean, if that's his comment, who are they? Here's a little information on Desmond. Just another affiliate of the Rothschilds, okay? That's all they are. they will be, you know, under their contract once they're, you know, once we, there's a decision to go forward, they have in their contract that they, in fact, will be uh, at the meetings with bidders and other, you know, uh, peers that are appropriate under their contract. Um, let's see. No. What other changes? Uh, number nine, page nine, uh, it says the project partners reserve the, the right on page nine. The yes. project partners reserve the right to reject any and all bids to waive technical defects, irregularities, or any information. The project partners also reserve the right to postpone the date in which bids are required. So, like, who's that? You are. So in other words, what that does is it gives the authority maximum flexibility. Well, we definitely know if we agree in the house that keeps this down, we spend a lot of money for nothing. Right. Right. Well, yeah. That's fair. That is that is why we have no guarantee well, that they're going to accept it. You know, it, it, that's an excellent point. And to, to that point, that is exactly why the bidders are going to say the same thing, to be honest with you. They'll want to know that city council is supported. When city council voted unanimously, uh, to support this, they, you know, city council voted to support uh, issuance of the request for qualifications. It, uh, it will be important to go back to city council to seek their approval of certain parameters with respect to the transaction. And to your point, we uh, will not go out with the RFP without that. Because just as you said, the bidders won't do the work to do their RFP without knowing that that's in place. And that, again, is, is part of what the market has told us. So, um, so absolutely, city council support has been critical, as has the mayor's, as has yours. And that is why we are looking at, prior to bringing it back to city council, having a public information session on the RFQ so that we can discuss uh, any questions they have about the process and while the RFQ is out of the market. If this members board, board is separate. If I could just say something, just so you understand. I went to the council meeting and I made a presentation on this, but before I could get into the second part of it, I was escorted out by the police until I could get into the campaign contributions and everything. So just so you understand, they voted on it, but I think there's just as much a shock as you people are at what's going on with this thing. And I know I talked to one councilman who was in shock. They did not know. So. No disrespect to Alan, they did not know all the facts here about J.J. Murphy and everything, as far as I'm So I just want that on the record. Yes. I was thrown out of the meeting before I could interject this part in. It was escorted out by the police. If this authority is separate from the city of Wilkesboro, why do we need council's approval to do anything? If it's not bound by the same rules and regulations the as the city. The city, because, let me ask you, it's a, it's a fair question. The city is, in fact, contributing, I don't mean giving, but contributed to the parking assets, which would be the subject of a private-public partnership, mm -hmm. would be not only the parking garages in Lot 6, which, was the only, which are the only assets controlled and owned by the authority, but also the parking meters, as well as the uh, intermodal, all of which are owned by and controlled by the city. Included in the parking assets, so that's the reason the city is included. Oh, I hope that answers it. It, it does. I'm just kind of confused, though. It is the authority is a separate subdivision of the city of Wilkesboro. It can hire Fox Rothschild without going through the RFP process. That's the part that really confuses me. And I got somewhat of a twisted answer from Alan. So, Mr. Ruffberg, if you could possibly sure. explain that in sure. layman's terms, I'm not a lawyer. No, no, that's okay. I, 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 I'm sure I can't do what you can do. But uh, the fact is that, uh, the, fact is that uh, the authority has is a, an autonomous body created for the purpose, for its specific purpose of dealing with the parking assets. The authority has the right to engage as an autonomous body those professionals and those we engage 
LAC parking is our management consultant. That's purely the authority which has done that, not the city. We've done that because we have seen, and we changed that parking, that parking person, that parking management company, because, and we see a much greater efficiency as a result of that change. So we have engaged, we engage an accountant to do our audit at the do end of the year. Do you put those out for bids or do you just hire no, no, rent? Well, it, it, the, the, the law is this, that if the authority has confidence in the fact that a professional is chosen, that has the competence and the qualifications or represents that they have the competence and qualifications to the satisfaction of the members of the authority, they have the right to hire without any RFP. That's the law. The, the law that relates to RFPs really addresses more capital improvements and labor that is being done, materials that are being purchased in excess of a certain sum of money. So that's what distinguishes professional services from from uh, uh, from uh, uh, the other the other items. I but doesn't but question. doesn't RFP stand for request for professional service? No, request for proposals. Request for okay, so RFP so, has so something need, different. So in certain instances, the law requires that you have proposals, okay. and and specifically delineates or other services that do not fall within the purview of that law. Okay, thank you. Sure. you you've given a much better explanation. Well, thank you. <laughs> I have one question. Who leased, if you lease the, if they lease the property, who's responsible for the reliability? Well, the, the, uh, the liability for the continued maintenance and, re and repair, as I understand it, we have not seen some of the documents yet which would accompany the, the, the transaction. There are a number of things, I, I, I'm being candid with you, these, and if you look at the RF, RFQ, which is a request for qualifications, you'll see that there are a number of things within there that are identified, uh, operating standards that probably would fall in that, a concession agreement, uh, which would be entered into, we have never, we've never seen that, uh, we've never seen those documents. My, my supposition, would be that given the fact that some other entity is now essentially controlling the management and operation of those parking assets, that that company would be responsible for repairs, maintenance, and capital improvements. That's that's the answer to your question. I, I think I hope it is. No, how about if someone falls and gets hurt? Oh, that's that'll be covered as it always is. I'm sure by, by insurance. Well, it'll be covered by insurance which would necessarily have to ensure the city, the parking authority, as well as the entity that's responsible for the maintenance. How about the mortgage payment fund? Well, it's anticipated that the money, th there's about $7 million roughly in debt on the, on, the, on, 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 se on the assets that would be subject to this proposal. So $7 million, I'm using a round number, so forgive me, I don't have the exact <laughs> figures in my head that money would necessarily be deducted from the amount of money which is being bid and ultimately accepted for the, pur for the purpose of this of this. So it could be 20 or it could be 13? Well, no, it would be. If the bid was 20, apart from any costs of the transaction that, that we're discussing at the table that would come out of the transaction, additionally, about $7 million would necessarily come out immediately before the closing took place in order for those obligations of the authority and the city to be satisfied. Again, I hope I've made that clear. You, you have Every board member aware of that? That's yes, sir. Right yes, sir, they are very much aware of it. And this is not at all related to Article 1031 from the IRS code, right? This would not ever not, become a transfer. Not, yeah. okay. Is there any way um, you can give us an email so we can contact the parking authority? Um, is maybe a personal email or a general email because we have no way of getting in touch with you. I mean, yeah, you contact me. Okay, yeah, I mean, and then maybe you could talk, contact the other members. I'll, okay. I'll get it afterwards. <clears throat> Thank you. I think it's also or maybe we should hire a consulting firm for it. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's also important to note on your question of the 20th that comes out. If we ever get to a phase two, 
there'll have to be uh, there'll have to be a program set up for long-term maintenance and repairs on these projects because the parking authority will be no longer in control. So if there's elevators to be needed in 10 years of the 30-year lease or whatever, that money would also be deducted by the bidder. Although he would put in the 20 million minus the seven, then any repairs or maintenance uh, long-term items will have to be also taken out of that bid. They would not, but they would be um, they would be netted out by the bidder before they put in the bid. So in other words, what they do is they say that's yes, why remember this. Everything's bid. about so control. Operating costs, if They're control freaks. That's all they are. That all goes into their map before the 20 million goes. That's all so they want. 20 million, they're taking care of that. And then, Money is but what? as Murray said, the paying off the debt that comes out of like the cost of the transaction. Hey, money is not their option. So they don't care about this. money, okay? They got the expenses tons of it. are not going to be taken care of by the city. Over the term of the contract, right. whoever leases these is going to pay all of the expenses, all of the maintenance, yes, no matter what. That is correct. That's part of their obligation. What's more, the city retains um, all the uh, parking fine revenue from enforcement, the parking tax revenue that they get per transaction, uh, that continues. And then as part of this, and this is why it's, it, one part of this is it helps the city fiscally. Um, the city is, is, as Murray just said, retiring $7 million of debt so that nobody will have to pay that anymore. So the city is being deleveraged, if you will. Plus 8% of, of sales also would go to the city. Pardon me? 8% of sales would also go to that, the city, the which of course completely unsweetens it for a, a buyer. I mean, you have, you have price, constra price constraints and royalties, and you don't get the fines. And you expect somebody to pay $20 million? Good luck. If it's they're not the getting fines. the fines, why are we tripling, well, timesing by a factor of eight, the cost of the fine? It's $10 now for a parking ticket in the city of Wilkes-Barre. By the end of this contract, it'll be $80. That's outrageous. We are not, and I repeat, we are not Philadelphia. That Philadelphia is 101. <laughs> 80 bucks is not a far cry from 101. We're at 10 today. <laughs> that's something the city council would have to yeah, well, we don't have the wages of Philadelphia either. Seven dollars an hour doesn't cut it. The rates and the meters fall under the parking authority, so that's something altogether. The parking authority would have to approve a term of, of and it's 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 written out here on the five percent issue. They would have to approve that because I don't think the concessionaire has the right to increase parking only under the agreement. So. That's, that's in the packet that you have right there. But now, if I can say something, I, I, I think it's on behalf of the authority. Uh, yes, um, giving me some input to get back. Um, I think what, what we're trying to do right now, and if, and if it's the five that the contract is reviewed with Desmond, if, if Desmond can look at the numbers as they are without an audit or anything else, we know the numbers uh, for number of spaces and whatever else. Are appropriate. We know our numbers are appropriate, so later on, I'm sure we're going to have to have an audit statement, and, and we do. Um, uh, our new one for last year is named yet, but uh, if we could have Desmond for this $5,000, look at the numbers, and go out and get whisper numbers from a number of bidders, um, be they the last company or the Carlisle group, whoever, whoever does this, whoever does this bid, and come back with a whisper number to which obviously would not be binding. And if we're nowhere close to what we're, what we're hoping for, then the process can't go forward and we don't have to spend the second phase of day. Amen. For that well, yeah, that, um, that is what the RFQ will accomplish. So what I'm saying, what the, the way the process works is to get those whisper numbers, we will get those the week after this hits the street. But the market needs a right to be able to do the work. They can't get, give a number based on whispers. We had a term sheet out there. We had talked to some bidders about that, but they're going to need, you know, more than that. And we want to have a. And, and, and so there's a, there's a, there's a. What we're trying to do is put together a process that has integrity and transparency in the information that will go to all the bidders. So as part of this, we built a website that is going to have all the relevant information 
so that when they give us, as you say, sort of a whisper number to know whether we're in there, and this is, at, we haven't paid anybody for phase two. We're just going out with the RFQ with these changes we discussed. We're going to have that, that whisper number for the authority before we're ready to go out to the RFP, before we even get the qualified bids back. And it sounds like that's going to be important for you all to hear. Well, certainly it's going to be important to see whether or not the authority is going to spend any further money. Exactly. Um, well, then we need that as soon as. I mean, we, yeah. I, I, look, I'm interested. I, I call around as people are saying 10, 12, if that's where their numbers are. Hello. I mean, they're, they're, right. You know, they're not going any higher because they're going to have to start subtracting out of that 10, 12. Your report, if the report ever got done, uh, elevator maintenance, all the rest of the stuff that would have to be done. Don't forget, if you're releasing a building for 30 years and you're totally responsible for it, I mean, there's some heavy duty expenses. Well, yeah, to be time. honest, when we went out to one of the bidders and they asked for who's doing the revenue projection and the assessment of the garages, and uh, when we said, you know, uh, parties we could consider, they said no. Those are not market acceptable. You need Desmond. Well, and, and so that that is, and so those same relationships, and that's relationships that we have and others have, will allow us to get that input for you. But to get that input, it's almost like a POS. Yeah, you need to go out to the market with some. It took us 107,000 to get to this point. Fair. That's right. That's right. That's exactly right. That's right. We'll you, take your more. Your is correct, and actually plus five. If we decide, you know, when, when the money goes out to Desmond, so you're almost at 112 to get that whisper. And, and but, you know, that said, we <laughs> yeah, have been, been talking to the market, and we believe that that would be successful. <laughs> well, I'll tell you stuff. what, I can't believe. And, and what this is, is this is an opportunity These people are that stupid. to avoid layoffs, to avoid property tax increases. That's what. That's what launched this process. As a homeowner, as a taxpayer, and president of the association, fire these jokers and I'll vote for the tax increase myself. I'll gladly pass a referendum. I'll, I'll gladly help with that referendum. Get Fox Rothschild out of this city and I won't mind paying more money to a responsible government. Mr. So. Allen, you said earlier bidders. And then when I questioned it, you said one bidder. And now when you just spoke again, you said bidders. Is there more than one bidder that you've contacted, or was there one bidder? Um, I you spoke said bidders, with then when I asked you, you said bid one, and right. now you said bidders again. Right. Uh, we have, how yeah. many bidders have you spoken to? Uh, we've gotten inquiries from two so far, and this isn't even out yet. So two. And, and I what would kind you, of response did you get from them? They want to be on the list to receive the RFQ. That's all. They haven't thrown No, they want to know there. what the deal is, to be honest. So that's, you know, sort of as Ed said, that's what we spent this money for, to get to the point where we can get credible information back from the market as to whether there's there's interest. But they certainly know they, they are interested, you know, and uh, that's why they are pursuing this. When J.J. Murphy calls you, is that nine hundred or seven hundred dollars an hour? I'm serious. Is it nine hundred or seven hundred? The uh, the question then is, uh, you know, that we'd like to ask the authority to consider is um, approving the issue. Did you hear the answer? With the changes that have been raised today, so that we can start the process that. Since the parking authority is going to be a part of the concession, 
you may have responsibility legally with respect to a payment. That said, the city will, you know, have the indemnification responsibility with respect to the authority. So all that is part of yeah, but the that's, but concession. I, we, have, we, have, we have discussed this earlier. Mm -hmm. I had said to you, the authority should, since the authority will not be receiving adequate funds sure. for anything more than just its bare bones operation for all intents and purposes, right. that it not have any responsibility, financial responsibility spelled out. Financial, right. Financial. But what I was well, referring to is legal. Yeah. Well, that, that's why I said primary. Okay. So that's what it means. It means legal versus well, financial. Well, then, then, then it should say that. It says payments to the concessionaire under the concession agreements shall be the primary response. That doesn't address legal. That, that's money. That's payments. That's what I'm thinking when I say that, yes. Well, if you're thinking payments, then strike primary. It's the responsibility of the city. Okay. Because sure. if there's an indemnification, right. then legally, the authority has no responsibility anyway. Well, yeah, I would disagree. And I would say that you will have a legal obligation, but that is going to be satisfied from revenues you receive. So that's why it's a concession agreement term, but I'm glad to make that change. Okay. Uh, secondly, in that same period, in that same section, you said a concessionaire may utilize up to 20% of the space right. for things other than parking. And yet, there's a provision that later identifies the fact that there would, that this would not impinge upon or change the number of parking spaces. Given the configuration, and I understand that you haven't examined the, the parking garages, or maybe you have, but there isn't 20% of the parking garages that's available for anything other than parking. So how would that happen? It's, it's, it's sort of a, it's magical. I don't, how, how does that happen? Yeah. Well, we sort of leave that to the creativity of the private market. You know, uh, things like uh, advertising, which doesn't take up space. Uh, it, we, we went over this at the previous authority meeting, so I'm missing your concern. Here. The fact is that we want to make sure that we don't take any parking off the table by these improvements. That said, we say to the private party, knock yourself out. You know, you can, uh, you know, if you can, we, we, we don't want to limit too much what space you use for private, you know, use, just don't take any parking out of the mix. That's all. Right. That's why we wrote it so they cannot take parking spaces out of the Well, the way Murray just read it, it says concession may use 20% of the spaces. Right. That, that's well, right. Well, he, yeah, that it says, well, then but then it has a little proviso out. which says, provided you can't take any parking spaces <laughs> out of the mix. So Murray's asking, well, how the heck can you do both of those? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How can you put in. Yeah, and it, take them out and still right. not take them out. Right. right. Well, I guess uh, if there's advertising revenue, perhaps for Wi-Fi, you know, there there can be issues that um, that you know things that can be done at a garage that don't actually take up floor space. Oh, and we want to leave that to the creativity of the it's of the bidder. Twenty percent of the space. Right. Right. But we can't. So it's using it. It's using it, but it's not taking out parking spots. So that's what we want to make sure of, is that we don't want to have a parking concession that shrinks the number of spots. Well, that's not making sense to me. <laughs> if you're using the 20% of the spaces, then you're using them. Oh, yes. If you're not using them, then you're not using them. <laughs> yeah, it's not the spaces, it's the space generally in the garage. So we can use space in the garage, but we can't use the, well, the Murray, eliminate spaces. I felt when Murray read it, it said concessionaire may use 20% of the spaces for something other so than the parking. The space. So I, I, my question was really addressed only to, and it was just, it was just a question. If you have 20% of the garage, because the garage is the space. It's not spaces, it's parking spaces. If you have 20% of the space that can be utilized for something other than parking, I just don't, I, it, it just, it, it would be interesting to find out how that could be done without affecting the number of parking okay, spaces. Okay, so we weren't but talking about parking spaces. Space. We were just talking just about general space. space. Okay. Offices All or right. something I else. Yes, closets, yeah. room closets. Yes, sir. I like that. You have no idea what you're talking about. That's the area's responsibilities. From home, my question is not answered. How does that happen? Yeah, I think that's it. 
I think that's probably, probably away from the RFQ. In other words, that sort of, it may be somewhere on, the, you know, as I was thinking about it, again, this is why I called you to talk about it. But I, I think it's a, good, it's a good question, but it's not an RFQ question, because it has to do with uh, whether it will be funded from the upfront payment, it's going to be the city payment annually, you know, how the authority in the city decide to do that. But the concessionaire doesn't care. They just know they're not paying for that. Well, they do care, though, but they, because they, to get your whisper number, they're going to be subtracting all these things out. The other thing that I had brought up before, Alan, and it still was addressed, is we, the parking authority makes a $100,000 payment to Hawkeye and, and, and uh, monthly basis, um, which needless to say helps keep them alive. But that, that also hasn't been addressed in here. Certainly the parking authority doesn't have $100,000 without its income side right. to make that payment to Hawkeye. So how's that going to be addressed? Yeah, it would clearly uh, not be something that would be on the authority side. So um, I think that's something in the, in the bidding process. So that, that would come out of the city. Yeah, it would, it, would, it would be something that at the RFP level and the concession.